Hello, this is Clement from Wavefront here to talk to you about the Wavefront proxy. Now, the Wavefront proxy is an important part of the monitoring story that is Wavefront. The proxy is a piece of software that is written in Java that is open source that you could actually download from GitHub. We also have uh, binaries um, for various kinds of distribution of Linux, for example, and it can also actually run on your Mac laptop or your Windows machines. Uh, it, there's a lot of um, questions about why you would actually want a proxy, and so hopefully this video will serve as a way for you to understand and plan ahead on you know, where you should be actually deploying a proxy. Now, Wavefront is a SaaS service, so it runs in, in our cloud, and it's, uh, most, for most people, it actually, um, you experience Wavefront through the browser. So how is data actually ingested into Wavefront? So currently, there are two ways, or essentially three ways, to actually get data into the platform. You have the way of pushing data into the cloud, and you have a way of uh, pulling data into the cloud. In terms of pushing data, you could go the proxy route, or you could go direct ingestion. In terms of the, the pool route, me meaning Wavefront actually reaches out into an environment of yours and gathering that data, we have basically you configuring the platform, and our system actually just reaches out to things like AWS, to things like GCP, or even things like New Relic, which are other SaaS platforms that allows you to get data, time series data, from these platforms and ingest them into Wavefront. Now, this video is going to focus primarily on how you push data into Wavefront. And there are essentially, as I said, two ways to get that um, to happen. If you're, ha if you're working in, in, for example, maybe a, a script, or you're just playing with it on your laptop, let's say on your Mac laptop or your Windows laptop, you can actually just directly push data from a script that you have into the Wavefront Cloud. The Wavefront Cloud is, is just exposed uh, over HTTP, so as long as you can incant an HTTP call from your script, from your little uh, experiment app, for example, you get data into, the, into Wavefront that way, and it's transported over HTTPS. Similarly, if you happen to be running in a fast environment, uh, functions as a service environment, you could also use similar methods to send data to Wavefront. And we have a unique set of SDKs that allows you to send data into the Wavefront cloud that way without going through an intermediate proxy. Now, if you have a fleet of applications or maybe a fleet of databases and you would want to monitor them, uh, you can, uh, if you so desire, at least in the initial steps, to send that data directly to Wavefront using the same exact method that I described before. But we oftentimes recommend folks to actually install the Wavefront proxy. What the Wavefront proxy is, is a piece of software that you run in your own data center. A lot of our customers run multiple versions of the Wavefront proxy, sorry, multiple replicas of the Wavefront pro proxy in their production fleet usually in a single region. So for example, if you happen to be running inside, let's say, you know, let's pick a region, let's say US West 2 in AWS, you'll be running a fleet of these proxies inside a single region and have all of the data that you're gathering through your applications, maybe through your com uh, software components, through Telegraph, through Collecti, and have all of that sent through a VIP of sorts. As long as it is a TCP load balancer, you can actually send that data to the Wavefront proxy. So there's oftentimes a load balancer that sits in front of this that actually load balances the traffic uh, to multiple proxies. Now, if you're just experimenting with Wavefront, you could actually choose to install just one proxy, even on your local uh, Mac laptop, and have all the data flows through it. And so you may wonder, like, so at what point do I switch to you know, having my own proxy fleet? And at what point should I just, you know, just go with direct data ingestion? And this goes into the heart of why we developed the Wavefront proxy. As you could imagine, not a lot of environments have internet connectivity whereby any application node or any database node can directly reach the internet. For example, there are cases where this uh, connection from the database directly to a internet IP would not be possible because of security policies. And you would actually want data to go through a kind of a DMZ of sorts that actually only allows traffic to ingress from your 
local or your internal um, uh, IPs and only allow egress to a specific set of IPs which Wavefront can provide um, uh, to our customers. And the proxy itself also serves as a way to do very simple rate limiting. So you could actually set rate limits on, on your proxies to ensure that you're not going over, for example, your contractual rates, um, uh, your contractual um, uh, quotas with Wavefront, as well as it allows you to do simple data processing. So a lot of the times, the, uh, the data that's coming in from your proxy or your, from your application is, for example, sending data that you do not want to be um, emitted to Wavefront. So you could do some basic data scrubbing on the, uh, on the proxy itself, as well as do, do hydration. So if you have a set of proxy, for example, that's running in US West, you can actually instruct the proxy to always insert a, pro, uh, a point tag that says region equals US West 2 into all of the data that flows through um, the proxy itself. And then finally, a very important point of having a proxy is for resilience. For whatever reason, you could have an outage in the connectivity that you have to Wavefront. Or Wavefront itself is, is saying that because you're exceeding your rate limits, for example, you're exceeding the, the, uh, the, the cardinality that we are allowing uh, that you to ingest into the platform, we are pushing back to the proxy. Now, with a lot of traditional or uh, other platforms, you might have the problem where the data is then lost completely because uh, the submission was rejected. However, with the proxy, what we have is an implementation where the data that's pushed back is simply written into local files that are then replayed back into the platform when connectivity resumes or when the system uh, or when the, the platform itself says you could, you're now safe to ingest that data. And so what it gives you is the ability to spool to disk if there is a connectivity issue or if there is a, if there is a problem with your data that the system is now temporarily unable to ingest. And so all of that allows you to have additional resiliency. And it's not uncommon to have customers where you know, they have a problem with their ISP and during that time, the data is actually safely stored locally on their proxy. And upon resumption of the connection, they're actually able to replay all of that data into the Wavefront Cloud. So another question that we commonly hear is, should I have a proxy per application or per database node? For example, if you have an application here, you could imagine on the same exact machine, I could, if I want to, put a proxy here and then have the ability for it to, to send data directly using the same method to the Wavefront system. Now, we typically discourage against this uh, deployment topology because typically if you're trying to get around firewall policies, the app node itself running the proxy doesn't have that capability. And you have to now manage this proxy deployment or this sidecar deployment on a variety number of nodes. Let's say you have thousands of, of app nodes or DB nodes or different layers of services. And now you have to do um, kind of the, the traditional patching and updating and all of that configuration management and all of that on all of your nodes. And that's something that, uh, that uh, would not be easy if you have a very large fleet. And then finally, this loses the ability for you to have a single place where you could you know, set rate limits, you could do data hydration, you could do data scrubbing, and instead it's now uh, scattered throughout your entire stack. So what we have um, been telling customers is that if they need this proxy fleet, and we strongly recommend uh, having that fleet, that they have a central place and they have a central concept of a, of a region or a deployment unit that they run a set of proxies behind load balancers that are configured just for that environment, just for that uh, purpose. For example, it could be a staging environment or a development environment, and there could be stricter policies on rate limits, stricter limits on what is actually allowed to be emitted to the Wavefront Cloud. And you could have a central place to manage that and allows you to have that flexibility of not having to run a proxy anywhere, essentially, and have all of the data stream from applications, from databases, from telegraphs, from CollectD into this single unit that handles all of the observability data flow. Hopefully, that helps you understand a little bit more about the Wavefront proxy. Um, go to our website to learn more about other aspects of Wavefront. Thank you.